evening, ladies. It is so nice to see all of you here, a great crowd. We are very excited to have these wonderful ladies over here share with us tonight. I know they will do a fantastic job. Um, and at the end, we're having ice cream, which is my favorite part. So <laughs> I love you guys, but I also love ice cream. <laughs> Um, so anyways, again, we're very happy to be able to get together again. So we're going to go ahead and pray before we get started. Heavenly Father, thank you so much um, for bringing us all here together tonight. We um, are just so grateful that we get to have beautiful friendships throughout our life to celebrate you um, as we journey through all different seasons in our life. Um, Lord, please bless tonight as we hear from these ladies, and just get to visit with each other. In your name I pray, amen. I'm so excited. We just found out we're pregnant. I started to try to put the crib together, the instructions were ridiculous. I hope this baby comes with like a manual or something. Okay. Uh, sorry. I can't wait for that first smile or the, the pitter pat of feet. Okay. Oh, and the first time my own child calls me mommy. Mom, 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 if I hear that word one more time, mommy, I can't find my shoes. Mommy, I spilled the milk. Mommy, can I wear my underwear four times in a row instead of three? Mommy, who shaved the cat? Wait, what? If, what I would do for some alone time. Alone time, that's all I have. I walk around this house, but all the memories, I remember Christmas and birthdays, but the most important things were those things at the church, and riding around to the different things. They're, they're out on their own now. They've left. I hope I did things right. I wonder if I'll do things right. Oh. <laughs> I'm over it. <laughs> what if they don't give me a manual? What if I have to figure things out all by myself? What if I mess up and they spend their entire adulthood in therapy blaming me? Because it's always the mom's fault. What if, well, at least I have the internet. The internet's never wrong, right? I just want to be a great mom. A great mom? That's all I ever wanted to be. And some days I feel like I'm failing. Just today, my daughter comes in asking me to help find her pet lizard, Polly. Apparently it's been living in her room and I didn't know she even had it. So I fake a smile and I go to look for Polly and, well, I found Polly right under my foot. I know her tail will grow back, but her right leg is a little different. If only I had some duct tape and a toothpick, we could name her pig leg Polly and be the talk of the town. There's all these moms out there with these perfectly dressed kids and perfectly clean house, and I'm over here duct taping lizards and putting a onesie on my cat. Definitely mom of the year. World's greatest mom. That's not me. But I wish that they would have at least gave me a call on Mother's Day. I know that they're busy. But, you know, why, why couldn't I have been a better mom? Why, why did I do so many things wrong? I wish that I was a mom they were proud of. I did everything wrong. I don't think I'm any good at this mom thing. God, God I, I need, need help. help. Oh, my beautiful daughters. I'm right here. Listen to me. My young one, I love, I love how you have given yourself completely to your new role as mom. Even though you haven't held your sweet one yet, you have prayed for this child you have cared for and loved this child since the moment you found out she was coming. I am so proud of you, but I know you're afraid, and it's okay. I will be with you every step of the way, and I am sending you help. 
your help will look like two women who have been where you are and can calm your fears and give you advice. Well, laugh with you anyway over all the mistakes you are going to make trying things you learned on the internet. <laughs> they will love your child and wipe your tears. They are my gift to you. Learn from them. Oh, my weary one, I love how much fun you have with the children I have given you. Don't worry about the mess in your house. Don't worry about doing everything perfectly. Don't even worry about the cat. Cats were sort of an afterthought anyway. <laughs> Now about that mom guilt you have. So what if you put your kids in timeout for their constant complaining and then forget about them? <laughs> Listen, I made the children of Israel wander the deserts for 40 years for that same offense. <laughs> it's okay. You are doing a great job. Give yourself some grace. You need some rest, so I'm sending you help. Two women have what you need, and they need what you have. One needs your advice. One needs your love. But both need your kids and your friendship. Love them. Accept their help. They are my gift to you. Now, my lonely one, you have served me so well for so many years. You raised your kids to be confident and independent, and best of all, you raised them to know me. They aren't perfect. I'm working on them, but that's my job now. It's time for you to serve me in a different way. You have so much love to give, and now you have the time to give it. I have two women who need you. Invite them into your home and your heart. Love their children. Babysit their children. Allow them the chance to learn from your experiences. They are my gift to you. Your loneliness will fade as you serve them. Now, my dear daughters, look around you. Go ahead, take that step. You weren't meant to walk this path alone. That's it, hold tightly to one another, to your families and to me, and you are going to thrive. Just one more thing, happy Mother's Day. microphone. <laughs> I'm Ramona Gank, and um, I was raised down in Louisville, Illinois, and always was with the Christian Church. And um, then when I married a Marine, um, he got out of the Marines in 1964, and we had to find a job. And so we came to Mattoon. We found Broadway, and we've been at Broadway, or I have, for 56 years now. Um, 
and the church just started eight years before that, so I'm an old timer. Yes, you are. <laughs> Karen Birch. Um, we moved to Matt to. No, my yes, voice is loud. <laughs> Right up here. Okay, I can hear that. Um, my husband started a job teaching here in uh, Mattoon in 1964, and we came straight to Broadway. So I've been here ever since. Let's see if this works. Does this work? <laughs> Hello out there. Like an ice cream cone. What? Like, hold it like an ice cream cone. I can't. Like an ice cream cone. Oh, yeah. Well, we came here in 1968, Chuck and I and our little girl that was three, <laughs> and because he took a job. <laughs> he took a job at Lakeland College that had just started. And so he was, had, just a couple of courses to get at Indiana State to get his master's degree so he could teach in the fall. Mm -hmm. So he, we got a house and he left for the week to go take his courses and I stayed home with Diana. And the first Sunday, which I didn't know where anything was in this town, so I looked in the telephone book and found Broadway Street. And I said, I know where that is, and there's a church, a Christian church. I looked up that, there it was on Broadway. So we went to that church, this church that was up there, and that, am I talking too you're loud? Fine. No, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> well, anyway. <laughs> Karen Birch was there. And that was so nice. She remembered me from going to Easter to being in plays. And um, so anyway, we just went there, Diane and I, and we have never left. <laughs> and it was the most god leading us thing I, you can imagine. I'm Jackie Chandler, and uh, we were transferred here with UPS uh, 44 years ago, this coming Memorial Day weekend. And um, we lived right over on Annis. We came from a Christian church background, and so we could see there were several different Christian churches here. But this was the closest to Annis, so we thought, well, we'll go there first and see what it's like. So the very next week, uh, Bill Stark and Wayne Miles came calling. Now, I, I, this was just before Wayne left, so I never got to know Wayne very much. It was just before he was leaving. And of course, Jim was working late, so it was just me to visit with him. And so we talked for a while, and then I said, you know, well, we saw there were several Christian churches, and we just thought we'd visit some and see what we thought. And Bill says, oh, you don't want to try any of those other churches. <laughs> and we never did. And we came here, and, and as Sherry said, very thankful. Our kids were first grade, fourth grade, and seventh grade, and had such good Sunday school teachers here and really good uh, youth ministers here, so it was the right thing. God led us. I'm Valerie Gibson, and um, we have been here since uh, February 4th of 1979. We started coming to Broadway, and it has been such a blessing and uh, to come and raise our kids here, and uh, like you said, such good Sunday school, teachers and uh, um, such good youth groups, and uh, it's just been a good, good years here at Broadway. <laughs> I'm Cheryl Hickox, and I've been here as long as Valerie. Valerie and, and Ray and Bob and I and another couple started coming here at the same time and just never left. We came here because we had heard there was going to be, there was such a good youth group and uh, like they all said, it's just, it's been where we're supposed to be. I've got um, 
so many good friends, not just these gals, but just so many of you. Dawn, right, sitting out there. You know, Dawn, ever since she was a little kid, so, and her mama over she's there. <laughs> and she's, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> No, we just, uh, you know, we've, it's just been a perfect place to be. And I'm just glad you're all here and glad to be here tonight. Okay, thanks. So how did you guys meet each other, though? Like when some of you, can't, you know, knew each other, but then how did you all end up meeting each other? And do you kind of remember how that went? We were talking about that and that we all actually kind of met, I guess, in Sunday school class. We really, and we would have monthly parties. I mean, every month we'd have a theme and somebody would usually share it in their home. We had some wild Halloween parties and scavenger hunts and lots of fun activities. So that kind of started it. And then through the years, we kind of honed in on a smaller group when we saw a need to really bond in having prayer and Bible study time. Back in those years ago, uh, when you went to church, you just automatically went to Sunday school. Yeah. So that, that's what really, you know, kept you involved and kept you together. Yeah. Okay, tell, tell us a little bit more about that small group. Was something, like, did, why at that time did you decide to do what now we probably would call a small group? You guys probably just called the Bible study, but what, what kind of... Why at that time? You know, why at that time? Because you, your kids were a little older, right, when that happened and stuff. Um, well, that was 1990 that we started this group, and that was 31 years ago. And we, um, Karen and I, we're first cousins, so we, we think alike, do alike, and blah, blah, blah. And um, I said, Karen, we need to do something. The Gulf War had just started. And... That's the first war that I remember was on TV. We saw the tanks coming in and the soldiers all going uh, to fight. And uh, that was scary time. And that's when we uh, formed our little group to uh, get us um, strength for the times that was kind of scary. And we started at Karen's. Karen's opened up her home. And we went out there every week. And um, we started with Friendship Bible Coffees. I, some of you may be familiar with that. And Marie Adams um, led them for quite a few years. She stayed with us and, and led them, her. And we had other ladies in, Erna Doty, which some of you know. And Cora Sue Stark was in it. And um, they were just such good, wise women and had been through a lot that we hadn't yet. So we just. We learned very much from them. Marie stayed with us for a while, and then she led other Bible studies. So I guess she thought we were big enough and could do it on our own. <laughs> and um, so we just started, you know, doing it that way. But we did. We met, ev you know, every week, very faithful. And um, I, that was the groundwork, I think, that really started it all. I, I did not start right away with them. <laughs> And so, uh, taking a walk with Karen one day, <laughs> and um, she, she asked me if I would be interested in joining the group, you know, this group of girls. And I said, oh no. I said, I'm already in a Bible study, and I'm much too busy. I just can't do anymore. So she said, okay. So then time passed. And she approached me again about it. And I started to think through all the things that I had to do. And all of a sudden, there was this voice. And it said, are you stupid? <laughs> so I said to Karen, yeah, I'll join. <laughs> also, it, it, you know, Cheryl talked about uh, us meeting every week. We all worked. We all had kids. and Well, yeah. some of us were stay-at-home moms probably then, but we started working. And it was amazing how dedicated we were. I mean, 
every week, we ha- you know, we knew we were going to go to Bible study. It got and us out. Sometimes. It got us out. <laughs> <laughs> we're wrong. <laughs> but it's just, uh, now we're all retired and gone, and it's so hard for us to get together because some of them are in Florida, some of us in, in Arizona, and, uh, but we still have the bond, even though we're not meeting every week now. We still know, hey, we can call each other and get prayer immediately. Immediately. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and that's what I was going to ask. Like, I know it's probably like almost natural now to just check in with each other, connect, but I mean, that's a lot of years. So, how do you feel like you kept with kids, with work, with everything? How have you been able to keep you know, your friendships? You think just partly in the small group, but what other things, other ways? We're just family. I don't know. I don't know what to say. They're just. There are, like we said, they're the first ones we call, and with the internet and with you know met text messages now. As soon as we know something, there's just you. It's you know the pray. Immediate. Yeah. I mean, you can put something on, and immediately, somebody's can, answering that they're praying, mm-hmm. and, and it's just not us. We've got right. other ones right out there in the audience mm-hmm. that do the same thing with us, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, we get tired of all this techie stuff, yeah. but mm-hmm. in those instances, yeah. let me tell you, it, it's, it's wonderful to have. But we also have shared joys and sorrows and knew that we had somebody to be there. Mm-hmm. I guess I was the first widow of the group, mm-hmm. and, uh, but I always felt, even though we were, my husband and I had been in even a couples group, and I always, Felt welcomed, never felt they wouldn't, didn't make me feel like a fifth wheel. And uh, so we, they were, my group was with me through the sad times as well as the joyful. Uh, We went through our kids having miscarriages and uh, then the joy of adopting. And so we just have shared a lot of life. We just do life together. Mm. Um, Family. About a year and a half ago, um, and I don't know too many know this, I had a little place on my neck here and um, went to the doctor and he said, well, you know, we'll check it, we'll keep watching. I said, well, I think it's growing. And he said, well, then we better, you know, see about getting it out. So sent him to the surgeon and that very day the surgeon took it out showed it to me and said, oh, I don't think this is anything. And so about a week later, the six of us were having Bible study here in the church, and my phone rang, and it was a surgeon, and he said, you have non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Now, first of all, I praise God that a scan after scan, it's never shown up again. But I also praise God that I was in this room with these ladies that instantly prayed, we instantly cried. But they got me through this as well as some other ladies out sitting out here with all their prayers. So God knew what I needed that day and they were there to be there with me and help me through it. Yes, they were. (laughs) Okay, I think we now need to skip to like the fun things you did. (laughs) Lots of fun things. (laughs) Lots Some of noise. laughs. Yes. Yeah, so Some what? So what? Yeah. What kind of? You did a lot of things, and sometimes you let the husbands be a part of that too, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes. So what kind of things did you do, like fun activities and stuff too? Well, well we like to go out and eat. Fun. Canoeing <laughs> and we golf. play cards with the husbands I, too. And and yeah. golf. And golf outings. We play cards. Yep. Uh, we take road trips. We. Um, Bill and Cora Sue moved to Kentucky after he retired, so we'd make road trips down to see Cora Sue. She was a part of this group at one time. Um, so we stayed connected with, with um, our former minister. Uh, we do birthday luncheons uh, for each person, and we went to praise gathering for how many years? Yeah. Uh, years and years. They, and a lot of people would know what that is out there. Praise gathering. Yeah, explain a little bit about what it is. Uh, the Gaithers in Indianapolis, and that was a three-day, I think, event. And 
Um, <sighs> I, I always, you got the guys to go, right? Well, yeah. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> It was in the fall when there was deer hunting. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> but I had my friend Donna, so we would tag along, and, and uh, yeah. it was a good time. One so. time, Valerie was a guest speaker over at St. Charles. Mm -hmm. And so we all went, and so she didn't know we were coming, and we all surprised her there to listen to her little speech. It wasn't a little speech, it was a big deal. We were really proud of her. Yeah. It was so nice of them to come. I appreciate her. And just as nice as her daughter and daughter-in-law is coming tonight. That's right. <laughs> um, okay, what? So I what about what serving together? What about serving together? Did you guys serve at church together? Well, we did BBS. I think we all probably were involved in, I mean, when you had VBS week long, sometimes two week long, you know, VBS. We, we were, were in the, the choir. We were the granny bunch we not the, too long yeah, ago with the granny, youth group here. Granny squad. Yeah. But we were all, all of us were in the choir. Your mom, I mean, Jackie was the leader and we all had our roles in the choir. Some smiled, some sang. Karen <laughs> mostly <laughs> smiled. Karen <laughs> smiles and we just, Tried to sing. sing. We tried. <laughs> Jackie wanted us to sing and smile. Yeah. yeah. You have to be gifted. <laughs> sing the right notes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> One of the biggest things I think when it comes to a group like this that makes it work is the trust we had mm -hmm. with one another. Because we could talk about anything in our group and we knew that's as far as that went. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's really important if you're in a group or you start a group, that you can feel that trust. Yeah. That takes years. That's what I'm mm -hmm. it takes time. It takes time. Takes time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not something you automatically feel. But yeah, after, after you've prayed together and laughed en enough together and cried enough together, mm -hmm. you know, it's, yeah. We even got to the place where after we through many seasons of our life now, we're retired and some of us would go where it was warmer in the winter. And one winter we had several of us were down there, uh, some bought, some rented. And um, so we even got together in, in different states and yeah. uh, enjoyed and celebrated together and had Bible study had actually. Bible study. Yeah, yeah. And some couples. And we let our husbands come to those. Yeah, we did. Those were couples Bible studies back then. Um, but we also did gingerbread houses one Christmas with the youth group, and we we had to do our gingerbread house, and they had to, and then they had to, we had judges to see which gingerbread house would win, and that was we didn't win. We didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> Ours wasn't very good, but it was fun. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we yeah. Did candy. Oh, yeah. 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 Was that a Christmas thing or just a... Yeah, Christmas. Okay. Part candy. You always get together at Christmas, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. We still party. Yes. <laughs> right. Whether we... <laughs> but, but church has sort of taken over our Bible study. I mean, we have a lot of good, and that was another good thing, at, you know, to get groups started, being in a group and then staying. There were others that we would be part of that we always hung on to our group. Yeah, so if you want to hear more on Tuesday mornings at 9 a.m. Or you can come Thursday nights at 6 p.m. Maybe they'll come visit us Thursday nights at 6 p.m. sometime. Yes, about the, uh, the candy, it was at our, at our house. Always. Always. Always, always because I, it, it just makes a terrible mess. But they did it one or two years, and they decided it was too much work. Yeah. So <laughs> they wouldn't do it anymore. You did it more than one year? What? What? I didn't know you did it more than one year. I thought that was the one year thing. You did it a couple of years. Yeah, yeah, we did yeah. a couple maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you've done it. Some of us, some of us hung in a little longer than others. Yeah. But sure. some of them said it hurt their thumbs. <laughs> hurt their thumbs. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, we do have a token prayer person, and that is Sherry. Yeah. She's, um, gifted. she's very gifted in prayer, praying. Gifted in I'm not. I don't like to pray out loud, <laughs> but um, well, you do what you will with these guys. I do with she these does. guys, and um, it. But we talked today, though, but, when we were together, and it's. I remember the first time we had that I had to pray out loud just with these six. I was scared to death. I mean, my stomach, I had butterflies. I thought, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? And as soon as I'd think of something to say, the person right ahead of me would say that. And you think, now what am I going to say? You know, but you learn it's okay to say the same thing that that person said. But uh, so we've grown a lot. I mean, I think back, Marie must have thought, oh my gosh, what have I got myself into? I mean, we had, we'd all been in church all our lives, but it's just amazing sometimes what you don't know. And um, she was very patient with us, and um, just her and Erna, I mean, and Cora Sue too, but they were just so wise and so calm, and they just brought us along, along, you know, they really did, and I'm so thankful for them for that. Yep. And did we say we like to play cards, too? <laughs> <laughs> we like to play cards. <laughs> and snacks, who makes the best snacks? What? Who makes, who makes the, the best, best snacks? 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 Oh. Uh, <laughs> Valerie. <laughs> oh, Jackie makes good ones too. Jackie makes the best chocolate chip cookies. Yep, yep, she does. You know, something that's also been interest was interesting is that that, you know, from us being good friends and then Jenny and Cheryl's daughter are good friends, and their daughters are good friends, and Karen's daughters and Sh Sherry's daughter are good friends. Right. And so it just, you know, what choice did they have if we all together anyway? They had to be with the other, those people, I guess. But well, it's just nice to see that. That's one question I had. How do you feel like your friendships affected your fa the family members? Like, I think yeah. you had a very positive influence, is why I'm asking that question, obviously. I think well, so. and Jim and Brian were friends. Yeah. 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 Well, you think about it, we plan all this stuff and tell our husbands we're all going to go out to eat tonight. And of course, they all became good friends mm -hmm. yes. through that, mm -hmm. and those who like golf, golfed, and so forth. And the kids were close in age, and this church and that time of, of those kids had such a wonderful youth group and they were such good friends and my daughter tonight said well tell them about how we all were such good friends because <laughs> we'd all go out to eat after church and on Sundays and the kids would all mess around and eat. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, then, like, when my daughter got married, both of her girls were in Diana's wedding, so. Yeah, I think we all grew up just thinking that was a really cool thing. We probably thought every, all moms, we kind of thought, probably thought all moms just did that. But we, we could tell it was important to you, you know, it definitely made an impact on us that it was very important to you, and that definitely made an impact, you know, on us for sure. Okay, what else, ladies, back there would you say about, don't be shy, Stacia, Nicole. like youth group like I can't imagine like getting through you know it was fun but it was so nice to see their faces you know and know that connection and for me if I ever needed something if for some reason I couldn't find my mom I knew I could find one of you you know you just felt like they were family I mean it's just 
Yeah, yeah. And you know that they're praying for you no matter what, you know, good and bad and up and down and all the way through, which is so nice to know. So. Right, right. I, it's just like the family we my mom has chose. My mom's an only child. So this is definitely the family my mom chose versus the family that. Right. And mom, you mentioned that about. Well, I, I think it's interesting that. This is my other, mom, uh, if you don't know. This is my mom. <laughs> I, I, other than Valerie, we all have sisters, but, they all, but none of them live here. So. We became sisters, mm -hmm. and, and in many ways closer than we are to our actual sisters. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. When Karen, oh, this is just a little off the subject. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, like, I think this was right. I could be wrong. But Karen got sick with something or had an operation, and we were used to playing golf together. In fact, I remember what they called us when we would go out, oh, go out to the golf course. The, um, I wrote that down somewhere. Golfing grannies were. No, it was the fearsome foursome. That's what they called us, here they come. So anyway, then we took up bridge. Right, that was after your, okay, so then we, Learn bridge, Troas Long and I started a little left lessons and then we added to it and those were friends that have become so close mm -hmm. that it's they're the same. They're just wonderful close sisters and uh it just kinda worked out that way. So there's it's just been amazing how the joy that it's just added to my life. You cannot even imagine. My girls say, Mom, you don't realize what you've got. That's, and what? I believe that. We, we what don't. Did you say? That, That's exactly what I was getting ready to say. My girls have said, Mom, that, you know. Um, and I think part of the amazing part is that we've all been here for so long that we haven't moved away. We are such a mobile society. And, and I also thought, like Jackie said, that we didn't really have parents, grandparents. So I think that ex added that extra bond for our friendship and our sisterhood. It's because we didn't have immediate family and siblings here. But, um, and, and the fact that when my husband did pass, that, pe that my friends, left other states where they were visiting to come home to be with me and help. And it's just wonderful to have. Yeah, and several Such of you have had surgeries and tell us the things you've um, done for each other because I got kind of yep, tickled at some of the things you did for each other. Totally you cleaned houses, but what else did you do? <laughs> Ironed. Ironed. <laughs> Ironed for them. I did. I don't mind ironing. That doesn't mean I want to do yours. <laughs> but I, at the time, I didn't. Like and it. I use the hair. I use that clothes dryer. I don't iron at all. So it's so funny to me that she loves to iron because I'm like, you iron for each other? Okay. But that was important, right? Cleaning the house and getting things ironed was what was important, probably. You, I'm sure you guys did whatever was important to whoever needed it at the time. It didn't matter what it was, but. How dedicated Karen was when we had Bible studies. Karen used, before she had hip replacement, right? Hip surgery. We would go to her house. I don't know why one of the others didn't offer our house, but we didn't. And we would go to Karen's house. She would sometimes have to, she'd lay down on the floor. There we'd be around the table having Bible study and her back would be hurting her so bad. 
But we still, we went every week. <laughs> Just expected <laughs> to go to Karen's house. <sighs> <sighs> and another time, <laughs> we used to, Val and I both used to have big, what were they van? The big vans, you know. The big and we were going on some trip somewhere, I don't know where. And Karen's back was hurting again. She, we, <laughs> we picked her up last. And she was laying on the floor in my van. Oh, I, we didn't know, leaving Karen's house, she lived out in the country, how to get out of town, you know, to get to where the road. And for some reason, we all believe she did, laying flat on the car, and I, you know, I don't know how we ever got out of town. We finally did, but that was... <laughs> we got lost. Yeah. We yeah, also, what, what, what happened to your van that one time when we were coming home? Was it from Terre Haute in the middle of the night on some... Yeah. Un the road, you probably all know that when you go to Westfield, the Clarksville Road, then you get to Marshall. We were kind of, we'd been shopping, I think, someplace, and we stopped in Terre Haute to eat at a restaurant on 3rd Street. We come out, we're just, you know, I'm going the speed limit, and we get on that road, and all of a sudden it was just like, boom. My whole, the whole tire, the, everything fell off. You know, before yeah, cell phones. All, and there was like seven of us, wasn't there? Yeah, it was before we had cell phones. Oh, yeah, no cell phones. I mean, and it was dark. And here, seven, I don't know how old we were then, but we still, it, you know, we didn't know what we was going to do, but God provided a gentleman and his wife that came up behind us that were from either Mattoon or Charleston. I can't remember. I don't even remember their name. And he, we got home. He put the spare tire on, and he followed us all the way to, you know, till we got home and made it safe. So God's taken care of us in a lot of different ways over the years. <laughs> Okay, what advice, and try to think, I know you're just, it's going to be a simple answer, but what advice if you have somebody that's wanting to kind of have la these lasting friendships like you guys have had, what advice would you give? Make an effort. <laughs> I mean, you just have to make an effort to, to do it, you know, to stay together. Um, now, yeah, I think to uh, find... Uh, a, a group that you want to be a part of, you have to kind of be involved in the church, go to different things, and you can always find a kindred spirit or someone that you think you might like to study the Bible or pray with. Um, you know, if you have school kids, our schools need prayers. And um, I know I have a niece and they pray for their kids over in Indianapolis, and um, that would be a group for the younger people to really start praying for our public schools or any schools. You could have a singles group. Um, you could have, um, a, we don't like to be called widows. Um, just, but we have a group. <laughs> um, but anyway, you have you find an interest and you get some other friends and, and just start. They have wonderful um, material out there to help you get started. She'll get you started. <laughs> Even if it's just two of you, you know, that pray together and then just, you know, go from there. Because it was Karen and Ramona that kind of swat where this came from, you know, so. Um, okay, so can I a open up to the audience to ask questions? I want to tell oh, one. Oh, you got one more? Go ahead. One no, little keep going. story if I no, can. No, you can tell five more stories. This is all we're doing. This is great. This, this really happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chuck and I had kind of an unlucky little period in our lives. This is just to show you how nice they always treated us. So it was just so wonderful. Well, anyway, Chuck and I had a bad time. Chuck broke, no, let's see. He had a really bad back problem and was going to have surgery or he had had it, right? Yes. And um, so anyway, we were sitting out on our deck, 
and the deck has seats around the edge of it. And so we were sitting there, and a bee came flying by, and or it could have been a wasp, we have both. And so I said, oh, I'll get him. And I went off the edge of the deck. I mean, I, I intended to do that. <laughs> And anyway, I went jumping off of there and heard this terrible crack. And it was my ankle. So Chuck, who was in so much pain that he could even hardly move at all, he had to go get the car, and we, I had to get myself in the car to go to the emergency room and all that. So here we are. The girls all showed up to clean the house, and we had such a nice time. We had pizza and visited, and they They could almost do it again, it was so much fun. <laughs> but I mean, whenever there's a need, they're there. Just had to put that in there, oh, dear. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm sure you'll still think of other things. Does anybody have questions? Do you have questions in the audience or no? Don't be shy. They told me they were gonna be shy. I'm so glad they weren't shy. <laughs> Does anybody wanna ask them whatever? Any questions? Did they cover everything? No? Nicole, Stacia? They're afraid to ask questions. Probably. <laughs> oh, yay! We're pretty scary up here. Never. 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 We just like each other, I guess. <laughs> we have, uh, there I mean, really, that is the honest truth. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's great. So I'm sure you might have disagreed. Did you just talk it out yeah. right then? No, we. I don't think we I don't remember agree. ever disagreeing. Well, we never. But we never. We, we always have our own opinion. Right. right. But we respect each other enough that, you know, we just think that's their opinion. I have my opinion, and you know, They're we. Wrong, we and I'm <laughs> <laughs> but she keeps it to herself. Where is Michelle? <laughs> I do think we, for the most part, for the important things, we know that God is the most important thing in our lives. Exactly. And the importance of Bible study and prayer and uh, our worldview, I guess, is very similar. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Because you focus on and God's word was where you focus. Yeah, and that's and, where we all started. And you all have, a, really, I'm sure you would never feel like you have a lot of Bible knowledge, but you do. But for the years, I feel like you do. You definitely do. Well, we are still learning. <laughs> I know we keep every. No, I like it. I like that you you always are reaching out to more more ladies because you are always talking about other friends. And I know you could name dozens of friends, you know, in your circle, and you're always including, and you're not you're not exclusive because some you know, yeah. and they're not, and you're always wanting to learn. It doesn't matter. You always want to learn more and grow more and come to my Bible study, even though you guys know more than me. <laughs> Probably, but that's what, that's what I love about, you know, you're just a good model. I've been blessed with you guys as a model, so. Well, I think it, our church board, our church elders have made it a, um, important that they hired a Jenny for us ladies, and we have these events. Um, She'll help you get small groups, and I just think this church, is, we're valuable here. See how sweet she is to me? Can you? <laughs> okay, other questions? Anybody? Oh, can you? Well, my young children, when we started, were 22 and 27. 
that. So, <laughs> um, but as far as like when you first met, or even when you first but, met, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, kids were little then. Little yeah. Then. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I had a nine-year-old when we started. Started in. Yeah. So I probably I I had the youngest yeah. with Ryan, and you know it just. Uh, but we had, well, we had a lot of social time during our Sunday school hour. Our kids would be plugged into Sunday school, and we'd have adult Sunday school class. And then we'd have, a, you know, kind of a social time. We had coffee. Mm -hmm. and, and then we'd go out to eat uh, often, as Sherry had mentioned. And so it started there. Um, and then, actually, when we started coming to my house for our weekly, my kids were out of the house by then. Uh, and some still had, but. And as a kid, you never left church quickly. You know, they socialized right all the time. Never left church quickly. That's right. That's, we socialized. The kids got to. But when I met with them, that's what they said. Church was their social life. What we have today is so different than, than when they first went, you know, when you first started at Broadway. That was your social life. And, and it's, you know, it, Sundays were sacred. Everybody yes. went yes. to church. Yes. Now you didn't plan anything else. Sometimes and, Wednesdays and were. I don't remember, you know, there were probably years where you did stuff on I Wednesdays know. at church. Or Sunday night. It was Sunday morning and Sunday night. Parenting too. is it very difficult. It wasn't just difficult. Sunday morning. So, so yeah. Today. yeah. But we didn't have all, when our kids were older, we didn't have as much going on as what you young people do, you know, today with the travel ball and the travel dance and the travel gymnastics. It's, it's a shame, I mean, I, I love all those things, I really do. I just wish there was a way that, you know, it's, it's got in on our Sundays. I mean, my granddaughter did, you know, gymna uh, gymnastics and the meets would be on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, you know, Valley and I was just talking the other day, I'm glad I didn't have to face that battle of ball games, so do you do you ball games, do, or do you stay home and go to church and make the kid mad, for, you know, at you for the week, so. I mean, you know, Dawn, <laughs> it's hard, yeah, <laughs> but it's, it's hard that society has taken away our, our Sundays, but maybe we've let it, I don't, you know, so. What made you come to the decision about starting a Bible study at the end of when you guys have been friends since 68? The Gulf War. The Gulf War. The Gulf War. We needed extra power. And prayer. Well, Cheryl and I always said we were going to send our boys to Canada. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were never going to let them go to war after Vietnam. We lived through that, yep. But I like what you said about just needing to pray for each other. I mean, what a great, I mean, we think we have to do a Bible study, but you don't. You can just start with praying together. I remember Jan Rutledge, do you remember this? She would have prayer and coffee at her house. Am I the only one that remembers this? <laughs> and we just prayed. And that was, that was where I learned to pray out loud because everybody did it. You got in a little group with just three or four people, and there was ten little groups of three or four people at Jan Rutledge's house. And we, we, we prayed, and you prayed out loud with just your little group. But I was like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> and then you got to know each other more as you prayed together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a bonding right there. That's true. Practice. You just need practice to pray out loud. Yes. Even when the kids were little, did, were most of your meetings just the ladies, or most of the time were the husbands there too? Husbands, babies. It's just that. the ladies. <laughs> did you bring the kids, or did you leave the kids with dad? Dad had the kids. Yeah. yeah. It was our time. Yeah. That's right. And they ran out the door. <laughs> But I was in college then, so, and my brothers were older. So that's, you know, that was almost getting, you were almost in an, you were almost empty nest stage, really, because I wasn't, nobody was home. Well, that wasn't well, easy either. Yeah, so, so it is hard with little kids, it but is. sometimes you bring the kids. You just bring them and let them yeah. play at your house. I mean, that's, that's, that's what we did. Yeah. That's what we did. We, just, we, we too had a yeah, couple's Bible study and the kids would come. We happen to have a basement, that, right, you know, so right, the kids would right. play in the basement. Yeah. But, and I think station, weren't you 13, probably? In 90, I was part of the high school. Yeah, so. So, yeah. She's a nine-year-old, but she's a nine-year-old. Travis was the eighth grade, and Ryan needs a lot of help.
even if you could, even if you would say, like, do the prayer thing, like Jenny talked about, if, if you even had that time, if you had a little bit of time to get together with friends, even, even if you couldn't make a whole evening of it or a whole afternoon of it, it, it would really bring you blessings. And then, and then as, your, as your time, if ever, becomes more available, you could do more. But you, but you got to start someplace, even with a little bit of time. Yeah. yeah, and one other thing is we don't have Sunday school anymore, but we have classes on Sundays. I think most churches still have a class or something. So just get creative because we have lots of room. So even if you get a couple of people together and would feel comfortable staying for two services and going to one service and then meeting even for just a few, 20 minutes after the service, but you, you can leave your child in the child care longer. So, I mean, start with 15 minutes or something on a Sunday, like... That, that, I think it's hard sometimes during the week, once the week is. I think it's hard to schedule. So it might be because at first you guys were friends really at your Sunday school class before mm -hmm. you branched out and did your small group. Yeah. Okay. And I am not volunteering, but a few years ago, this was a younger girl, and she Yeah, and you might find someone that would just do it. We ha we were really blessed because we had Betty Hutton used to go to church here, and um, bless her soul. And she watched the kids. I don't think we paid her. She just watched the kids, and we did Bible study, and we just we just took turns leading. We really didn't know, but well, there was good stuff out there. We just took turns leading the Bible study and led and got together. You know, you just find find a, just a few minutes, start simple, and get together. I think. It's hard when you got little kids, though. Yeah. It really is. And yeah. especially if you're a working mom and you've been away from them all day and then you come home, you don't want to get back out at night. I understand that. You want to spend time with them and you want to just sit down and rest yourself. And so maybe it's once a month. Maybe it's not every week. You know, start, you know, too. I mean, I think start with what you can do and go on from there. Or, or just finding one person as a prayer buddy and, That's right. and praying That's even. Right over the phone or together or mm -hmm. start there small and then as your children as we talked about you know there are seasons that will grow either that will grow Playing, playing cards. cards. <laughs> that is a really good question. Well, in the very beginning, the Friendship Bible Coffees, I think it was called, and they provided the literature and how to teach it, and we would each take um, a week, and we would be a teacher of and if I can do that, anybody could do it. It was, a, and I don't know if they still have those. And then we kind of graduated to Beth Moore and a lot of video, and that was a lot of homework. Do they still have version? Yeah, Beth Moore does have a lot of homework. But they, it made, she made you study. That's hard. I that's, like that. that's hard to just pick out one thing. Yeah. I mean, we've done, you know, we did Beth Moore, but after you've done some of her, she wears you out. You can only do so many of, she's very, I mean, they were all really good. Um, but we've done what, Phyllis, I say her last night, Shire. Oh. And yeah, she's very, she's very good, you know, but. Well, and, and her sister, we yeah. did one yeah. on the Tuesday morning. Uh, Crystal Evans Hurst. Yes. Yeah, her sister's very good. And we're going to do one in June. 
by both the sisters, with both the sisters, and the mom wrote the Bible study, and they're going to do the videos. So four weeks in June, uh, Tuesday mornings and Tuesday evenings, so either time. And if you can just come for 30 minutes, you can come for 30 minutes and go, <laughs> because I know it's hard sometimes to stay the whole time even. Sharing. Okay, other questions? Last call for questions. Okay, well, I'm going to put you on the spot because I just thought of this. So Valerie plays the piano, and one of the things you talked about was when you go to build courses, you always sing. So would you, can, would you play something and we'll sing? Yeah. <laughs> and hopefully something that you guys know. We've also, at, we've also at Christmas time played Name That Tune and had Valerie play. That was one of our games. What? One of, name That at, Tune. Name That Tune at one of our Christmas parties. Did you just, like it or not? Ramona was, does not like to play that. And two of the ladies in this group do not know how to play bingo either, if you can imagine that. I'd like to listen to Valerie play. if you know that one, right? That was Bill Stark's favorite, and he just, yeah, you hear him on that. Well, play something. What did she play? Well, they know family, huh? Family. Family. Isn't that one too, right? Yeah. Well, what did you say, the family family? family. better than they do. <laughs> I don't want to do a solo. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. What else? Um, Make them a little lower, Valerie. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something. 
and Valerie would play the piano at the tea room. There was a baby grand, remember that, in Florida? <laughs> well, we just really appreciate you sharing, and I hope it'll just, just, it's just making you think about your friendships and just how blessed we are all because we just can't do this life thing without each other. We just need friends, and for me, it's just, it's just fun to think of the memories and think about how blessed I am to have my friends. Some of them are here. <laughs> and so I just really appreciate it. And I hope as we go to ice cream that you will just like share and share more stories with each other. And you're going to ask these ladies more questions if you want to, but share your own friendship stories. And maybe next time it'll be somebody else sharing their friendship story with us. And we just know that God, he cares about our friendships and he cares, you know, he, he guides us and directs us to the friends and the people we need in our lives, the seasons that we need them in. So, um, guys can, I'll let Excellent. you go. Okay. Okay, ladies, before you run out to have some delicious ice cream, I wanted to let you know, or encourage you anyway, to um, definitely take a look at the handout that you got when you came in. And if you didn't get one, then please let us know. There are a lot of fun events coming up this summer for women's ministry. And you can find all of those in the awesome ministry catalog that'll be coming out next week <laughs> for the summer. Again, thank you to our panel of speakers. Thank you for being great role models. And thank you to everyone for coming. Let's take a minute before we go out to enjoy ice cream to pray. Lord God, we love you and we thank you for always providing for us. Thank you for bringing women alongside us right when we need them. And thank you for always loving us and caring about everything that is going on in our lives and knowing exactly how to take care of us and how to love us and how to bring others alongside of us to love us. We surrender everything to you and we love you and we praise you and we thank you for this evening and for all of the wonderful women here. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.